beginning to think coming down this road was a mistake. What's up, everyone? We just got on the trail. We're, I don't actually know where we are. Where are we? <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> We're making this up as we go. The fellas are airing down the tires. I think this is the fastest. Uh, Jeff has aired down and it's likely because it's 98 degrees right now. So it's ah. very hot. There's no shade. So this is gonna be quick. We'll be down there soon looking for camp. Here in the Olympic National Park, an absolutely stunning place. Today was an eventful one. It took us a little while to get out here, but we made it and we ended up finding an incredible campsite while we were all just ready to pick the first campsite that came around, really. We were all ready to set up camp. It's a little bit late in the day. And we just stumbled across this site uh, on a little spur road off of a very narrow and overgrown and pinstripey road. Uh, we probably doubled the pinstripes on the uh, Lexus, I would say, but we made it. We were rewarded by an incredible campsite with great views, but uh, it's pretty late in the day, so we're just gonna make some dinner and relax, get our tent set up, and really uh, have a full day ahead of us tomorrow exploring the Olympic National Forest. So come along and join us for this trip. It should be a lot of fun. We can't wait to see what we find this year in the Olympic National Forest.
it's not that bad. The only thing is, you really have to plan and be intentional about what you're eating. Yeah. I'm up early this morning and exploring camp after making a little bit of coffee and I found this path. You can see it behind me. This path goes up into a rocky outcropping and so I've just kind of been walking up there and it leads to a pretty incredible view. The walk up there, I don't know if this path was carved by people or by wildlife, but it is just full of these wildflowers of all colors, whites, yellows, purples. And walking this path up to this rocky outcropping here leads to an incredible, incredible view. So I figured I'd show you what it looks like. It is a little bit sketchy, but that's all right, as long as I don't fall. So look at this. I mean, that's your view with your morning coffee from this campsite. It's just absolutely incredible. And look at this, I mean, this thing keeps going. I'm getting narrower and sketchier, but I think that I will uh, stop right here. But yeah, this is a great campsite. Hopefully a good omen to the start of our three-day trip, being able to find such a, a nice camp spot and place to relax. And uh, we've got a little bit more to go on this road that we're on, which is probably the most pinstripey road. I think I mentioned that yesterday that I have ever been on. So hopefully we'll be able to make it through and there's no trees that are, that are just too much of an obstacle to get past. But anyway, excited to see what the day brings and uh, what we're able to find. Today, it's gonna to be hot again, so maybe we'll find a river or a stream to cool off at if we can find one where there's not already a ton of people at, because that is kind of the problem out here on the Olympic Peninsula, is that just about everything near a river when it's hot out is packed. So we'll see what we find. What do you think about that view? Awesome. Holy moly. This is beautiful. And I can tell you just want to go further up, right? You want to go all the mm. way. You want to go all the way up there? No. <laughs> <laughs> In no particular rush to break down camp, we took our time, made breakfast, and marveled at the beauty of the Olympic mountain range, perched high atop our secluded ridgetop clearing. Eventually, though, it was time to hit the trail, where almost immediately we realized that the road that lay ahead did not intend to play nice. So we're about 10 minutes on the trail and we are collecting a lot of pinstripes. A lot, a lot of pinstripes. I wasn't expecting it to get worse than it was yesterday. Uh, if anything, I was hoping it would get better. And uh, at least to start, it's been even more overgrown. So we'll see. Hopefully, it opens up here at some point because we've got probably another hour of this at this pace before we get to the uh, the main road. So fingers crossed, it'll open up a little bit for us. We'll see. The views are pretty though. The views are nice. When you're out of the trees. You can get out of foot here.
let's give you all a quick update. So we are about 20, 30 minutes into our uh, trail this morning. And um, I see a truck now. Um, we, Jeff and I were gonna walk down here and look to see if there were gonna be big, huge, overgrown uh, trees and if we needed to cut things down. He's getting his machete. Um, I'm walking down and there's actually a truck. So, <laughs> wasn't expecting that. We haven't seen anybody since we got off pavement. Um, hopefully. When Christine told me of a truck she had seen, I was briefly filled with optimism, thinking it could mean the road went through. That optimism, though, was short-lived as the truck turned out to be an even more ominous sign than the trees encroaching on the road. Wow, well, this is pretty intense. This truck, I don't know if it went off the road at some point. I mean, it's a, pretty much a brand new Ram. It's all shot up now and tires are off, but I don't know if you went off the road or if you broke down here and somebody kind of pushed it off, but that's crazy. I've never seen anything like that before. That's nuts. So. That's the road we're on right now. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up, but hopefully we'll have better fortunes. I feel good after looking down the road a little further, so fingers crossed we'll get through this in one piece. <laughs> For a few brief minutes, the trail opened up, bolstering our optimism. And then, the downed trees came. That's the first thing we've had to cut through, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I mean, fingers crossed, there's still some trail to go, but it almost looks like it's opening up. We're almost to the main road. Fingers crossed, we might make it through this. We will make it through this, come on. Good. Yep. What do you think? Uh, I think we can get through it. I just want to look to make sure that this ditch isn't too big. Yeah because I kind of have to drive into it. So, I think that, I think I'm gonna pee first. <laughs> That's what I think. And then I might cut this piece off. And then, less than a quarter of a mile away from our exit point, Ooh. I think we need a plan B. What do you think, Corey? Plan B? That's a lot. Of tree and those are pretty thick. Jeff's still walking the trail, and there are lots of down trees. Like these four? Everywhere. We can get through this. But I don't know about those two coming next.
trail that had a lot of downed trees. How many trees did you count? Uh, at least 10 that we would have needed to cut through. And in a super short section. I've got an electric chainsaw, we've got a saw, uh, we've got a machete, but we're not equipped to cut through. They're big trees too, we're not equipped to cut through them. We're, all, we're only like a less than a half a mile, maybe a quarter mile from the main road. So we have to backtrack, so we're probably two hours away backtracking through this horrible overgrown road. But at least we know we can get through. So probably another hour and a half, two hours maybe, and we'll be back on the main road and we'll see if we can get there with no mishaps. Well, we made it back to the abandoned ram. Continuing onward. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we made it back to pavement. We made it! Wow. Well, that was an adventure. We made it probably within a quarter mile of the main road. Actually, the same main road that we're on right now before at least 10 thick downed trees were across the road. And we just are not equipped for that. We've got some equipment, we've got an electric chainsaw, we've got a handsaw, we've got a machete, but it was just too much. And I don't know if there was more. It looked like that part of the road had not been cleared in a very long time. So that is possibly the worst road that I have ever driven. Um, it required so much concentration because it was so tight, trees on both sides, you're worried about getting a tire spiked. That was my biggest concern. And trees trying to take things off the, the things we have up on the roof rack as well a couple times. But hey, you know what? We'll remember that for sure. Good uh, stories will come from that. Anyway, uh, we're back on this main road now and we're gonna stick on this, it looks like, for a little ways and uh, maybe head towards a lake. Wayanuchi Lake is maybe about 20 miles away, so we're gonna go check that out, see if we can find maybe a dispersed campsite or primitive campground and set up camp and relax. Uh, it's gonna be hot today, it's already getting hot and um, we're all a little bit tired after that. It took about three hours, three and a half hours to get through that from our campsite this morning and all the backtracking and cutting some branches and, and opening up the trail a little bit. So yeah, it was fun, I guess. It's fun, yeah, it was fun now that we're through it. And uh, so we're gonna continue on and enjoy the rest of our day. Join us next time as we hunt for the perfect campsite to relax and beat the summer heat. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the rest of our Olympic Peninsula adventure.